Okay, so we're going to continue with um, homework number five, or assignment number five, section 2.5. Um, and this is me giving some help with this. Now, for number 27, we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity. And if you actually try to see what's happening here, you should see that this is going to infinity minus infinity. And although we haven't talked directly about um, that this is an indeterminate form, infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form. Uh, I know that might seem weird because, again, if we're subtracting one thing from itself, we're supposed to get zero. Uh, but that those things have to be numbers, real numbers. Uh, infinity minus infinity, those are concepts uh, or transfinite numbers if you want to go that route, but they're not no, uh, real numbers. Uh, and so uh, we can't come to that conclusion. And we'll talk more in chapter four about this pattern and, and what's happening. But for now, let's just get in and do some math to this and figure and see if we can figure out the limit. Um, we're going to rationalize the numerator on this. So I'm going to make this a fraction over one because it is. Well, we don't write it like that. And I'm going to rationalize by multiplying by the conjugate. And I have to do so in the numerator and denominator so I don't change the value of the fraction, the expression. And so it's going to look like this. And then when I multiply the numerator out, remember we get our difference of squares pattern here. So I'm going to end up with 9x squared plus x because when I square that square root, they'll cancel. And then when I square the 3x, I'm going to end up with 9x squared. So that's our numerator. And the denominator is going to be just that conjugate that we used, like this. Obviously, the 9x squareds are going to cancel here. And I'm going to give just a bit more help and then refer you back to your notes to complete this one here. Uh, when I rewrite this, um, this should look like an example that we had in our notes. And uh, for to remember uh, or to remind you here, this is an example where we divided by the square root of x squared so, so that we can get into the denominator uh, the square root in the denominator uh, in the example in our notes. And we're going to use that here so we can get into this part as well. But I got this 3x over here and I still have this x, so I have to remember to divide by the absolute value of x because those are equivalents. Okay, those are equal to each other. So when you do this, you're going to divide the x in the numerator by the absolute value of x. You'll divide the 3x by the absolute value of x. You'll divide the square root of 9x squared plus x by the square root of x squared. And then follow what we did in our notes for the last couple of examples from, uh, that had that in, the, in this section. And you should be able to get to the end. If not, come and see me in office hours or something, and I will uh, give you some more assistance. All right, so for number 31, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of x. Um, this one should be pretty straightforward. Um, if you remember what the graph of the cosine function looks like, it looks just like the sine function, except it uh, starts at a different place, but at some point it'll become indistinguishable unless you have them side by side. But it's just going to keep oscillating, uh, uh, moving up and down between negative 1 and 1. Um, remember, for a limit to exist, the outputs have to be approaching a single real number. But as x gets larger and larger, this never settles down to be a single real number. It's going to continually change, like I said, oscillating between negative 1 and 1. So you just have to describe that for me and tell me what's happening. All right, so now we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. Um, back in pre-cal, you should have learned about dominant terms. And in an example like this, x to the fourth is not the dominant term. The dominant term comes from the highest power of x that you have in the expression. So the end behavior of this graph as x either went to infinity or in this case as x goes to negative infinity is going to be the same behavior as just the x to the fifth graph. And you should know that if your uh, your highest power of x, um, I'm sorry, if in the background I got some noise I was listening to. Um, if your highest power of x uh, is an odd power, 
and the coefficient on that is positive, like this one is, then the ends are going to look like this. The right end is going to go to a positive infinity, and the left end is going to go to negative infinity. And so that's what's, that's what's happening here in this example. For number 42, we want to figure out all the horizontal and vertical asymptotes for the graph that's, uh, of this function. And so for vertical asymptotes, you know, we have a theorem uh, in our book. It says theorem, not in Stewart's because it's not in our textbook. But it says that uh, if we find places where the denominator is zero and the numerator is not, then that's where we're going to have um, uh, locations of vertical asymptote. So you're going to set uh, e to the x minus 5 equal to zero. And then you're going to solve that for x. You should be able to solve that using, uh, use also, I'll give you this hint, using logs. Um, and then uh, what the answer that you get, you're, so you're supposed to make sure that the numerator is not zero, but the numerator is 2e to the x, which is never going to be zero. And so uh, when you solve that, you'll get your vertical asymptote. As for the horizontal asymptotes, we have to take two limits. We have to take the limit as x approaches infinity of this expression and see if we get a result. And we have to take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Um, these have to be approached differently because of uh, what's happening. As x goes to infinity, this is the numerator is going to go off to infinity, and so is the denominator. So we'll do this technique of dividing by the dominant term from the denominator. We're going to divide by e to the x, like this. And of course, the e to the x is here, and here are going to cancel. This one's going to leave a 1. And then this one's going to go to zero, and I'll let you do the rest. Now, as x goes to negative infinity, you want to think about this one a little bit differently. Let's forget about the stretch factor, and even let's forget about this shift um, right here. Let's just focus on the e to the x part. If you remember what e to the x looks like, it looks like this, and it has a horizontal asymptote uh, on the x-axis, or y equals 0. So as x goes to negative infinity, you can see the graph is going down and down and down, getting closer to 0. Um, and so as x goes to negative infinity, the e to the x part here, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. And again, you could do the rest.